so what does it actually take to grow bigger, rounder glutes? I used to have a really flat butt and I hated it. I hated shopping for jeans and I would see all of these online transformations, crazy before and afters, and I wondered if my butt could ever look like that. I have managed to grow my glutes a lot since the start of my fitness journey. Honestly, if I can do it, so can you, and I'm gonna help you get there in half the time that it took me. In this video, I'm gonna cover how to choose the right exercises to target all three muscles of your glutes. We're gonna build you a workout plan. I'm also gonna tell you how long it took me to build my glutes and share how I took my training to the next level. What if I told you that you only needed to do four exercises per workout to grow your glutes, and you only needed to work out two times a week for only about an hour? Honestly, when I was starting out, I wouldn't have believed me either, but let me explain. So basically, our glutes are composed of three muscles, glute medius, glute maximus, and glute minimus. And to get nice round glutes, you'll need to train all three. To start building your workout plan, simply pick one exercise from each one of the following four categories. And if you don't know which ones to pick, simply follow along. I'm gonna go with my favorite exercises. Starting with a Smith machine lunge and a leg press, and I usually like to do the barbell hip thrust or a B stance unilateral hip thrust. For the hip hinge, I like the Romanian deadlifts and the 45 degree hyper extensions. Those are really one of my favorites. And last but not least, the abductor machine or the cable abduction. You will notice that I picked a unilateral exercise in each one of my glute days, and that is to prevent any imbalances from forming where one side is working more than the other over time. Just make sure you choose the right exercises for you that you can execute safely. Now that you have your program, the next step is to learn proper form for each one of the exercises that you have selected. And if you need help with that, you can watch this video next. I use a free app to track my workouts called Strong, which makes my life so much easier. And yes, you absolutely need to track, otherwise you're not going to know if you're progressing. Your goal each time you go to the gym should be to beat your last training session. For example, if I did three sets of eight reps with 60 kg on my leg press, the next time I go to the gym, I would aim to do nine reps. In general, I try to keep my reps between eight to 12. So once I hit 12, it's going to be time to add more weight. This is what everyone is talking about when they say progressive overload and it is absolutely essential to see growth. I also do three to four sets per exercise for a total of 10 to 30 sets per week. I remember I started lifting back in 2020 and in a bit less than a year, I had progressed my deadlift, my squat, my hip thrust, close to my own body weight. I was also bulking at the same time and I felt like my glutes literally doubled in size. The newbie gains, guys, were unreal. I'm not going to cover nutrition in detail, but I will say this. At the end of my bulk, I had gained more than 15 pounds. So I decided it was time to end the bulk and lose the weight. The thing is, as I started to lose the weight, my glutes started to slowly disappear. Half my glute gains were due to fat gain. Us women, we can only put on about half a pound to maybe a pound of muscle per month. So you really only need to eat in a small surplus to make sure you have enough energy to push through your workouts. I really wish newbie gains would last forever, but that's not the case. So in this next part, we're gonna talk about how you can keep progressing your training once you're past that stage. There are really five things that I changed that helped me push through this plateau and grow my glutes even further. It's really better to learn and perfect a few exercises than to always switch it up. I started to really see the biggest difference when I stuck to exercises that worked for me. 
and I chose these based on three criteria. How much I felt the exercise in my glutes, whether I could progressively overload it, and if it felt safe. Have you noticed that slowing down a movement can make it feel so much harder? You basically increase the time under tension, which leads to micro tears in your muscle fibers. And once those micro tears repair, then your muscles grow. Personally, I usually take two, three seconds for the negative part of a movement and then focus on a more explosive, positive part of the movement. This next point kind of sucks, but it's unavoidable. As your body changes and adapts to your training, you will need to find ways to challenge it to force further growth. So now that I'm no longer a beginner, I have to train much harder and closer to failure to continue to see growth. To do that, I have been progressively adding more volume to my training and I've integrated drop sets so that I can really burn out my muscle. It's a bit counterintuitive, but by working out, we're actually damaging our muscles so that they can repair and grow bigger. And a lot of factors can actually influence your rate of recovery, such as diet, sleep, hydration, training intensity, etc. I started to see more results when I adjusted my training intensity to recover better. And this might be a bit of a surprise, but I did that by lifting less heavy and adding in more volume. And this is a bit interlinked to the last point I wanted to make because by decreasing the weight, I also improved my consistency. I realized that I used to skip glute days because I wasn't recovering fast enough. And training two times a week consistently really makes a difference, especially compared to one time a week. So these are the things that over the last five years have really helped me take my training to the next level. I think this was a question on one of my videos in the comment section, but should you change the exercises in your workout plan? It takes eight to 12 weeks to see true results from your program. After that, if you'd like, you could reorder the exercises. For example, start with a lunge instead of the hip thrust because the first exercise that you start with will be the easiest to progress. So shifting your focus that way could prevent a plateau. You could also completely switch all the exercises in your program every eight to 12 weeks if you feel that's best for you. Doing this could alleviate some of the stress on your joints. However, it could also slow down your growth just because you might not be as comfortable with the new exercises. Personally, I also like to take a deload week every four to six weeks where I lower the intensity of my workouts to allow my body to recover. Next, let's go over the proper form for each one of the exercises we selected.